Welcome to Accessibilities, hosted by Dr. Dean Marquis. Marquis, up. Hi, I'm Dr. D. Gennetti, and this is my co-host and service dog, Marquis. High five, Marquis. High five. And a boy. Marquis, say hi. Say hi. Marquis, say hi. Good boy. And who's our special guest today? It is Brooke Green from the Wilmington Commission on Disabilities. This is a new program brought to you by the Wilmington Commission on Disabilities. Today is the first episode. I wanted to do this show to highlight inspiring people who happen to have disabilities. People in various jobs are with interesting hobbies or talents. There is a saying, if you see it, you can be it. But there is a severe shortage of people with disabilities on, visible on the screen. By highlighting people who happen to have a disability, I'm hoping that a viewer watching may say, I have that disability, and if she can do that, maybe I can do that too. We would also like to highlight organizations, businesses, and town departments to show their reasonable accommodations for equal access to their products and services. We will talk about disability issues you may want to know more about. If you happen to be a person with a disability and have an interesting job, hobby, or talent that you would like to share, we would love to have you as our guest. Or if you know anyone, you can email us at accessibilities2020 at gmail.com. And if you are a business or organization, you can also email us at accessibilities2020 at gmail.com. We would love to have you, love to hear from you. I want to tell you a little bit about disability. Disability is a universal facet of the human experience. And at some stage of their lives, disability will affect almost all members of society. Through birth, accident, natural disaster, illness, war, or poverty, anyone can become disabled without regard to age, class, race, or gender. People with disabilities are the largest minority in the United States. Disabilities can be physical, sensory, including hearing, hearing and visual impairments, mental, and also invisible. I promote disability identity as a culture of pride and strength not pity and shame. I see disability as just another way of moving through the world, just different modes of functioning. There is a phenomenon called disability culture. Disability culture emphasizes a way of living and positive identification with being disabled instead of seeing disability as impairment. Through the lens of disability culture, life with a disability is a way of life, neither tragic nor devalued, which is in contrast with mainstream views that invite oppression, isolation, and discrimination. Stephen Brown, an activist and civil rights advocate for people with disabilities, gave this as a definition of disability culture in 1996. People with disabilities have forged a group identity. We share a common history of oppression and a common bond of resilience. We generate art, music, literature, 
and other expression of our lives and our culture infused from our experiences of disability. Most importantly, we are proud of ourselves as people with disabilities. We claim our disabilities with pride as a part of our identity. We are who we are. We are people with disabilities. So I am a psychologist and I have been a commissioner on the Wilmington Commission, Disability Commission, since a year after its inception for some 30 plus years now. I have also been a civil rights advocate for people with disabilities for a little longer than that. The Wilmington Commission is set up to bring about and ensure full and equal participation for people with disabilities in all aspects of life in the town. We improve program access and we remove barriers encountered by people with disabilities. We provide information, referrals, advocacy, and technical assistance to individuals, businesses, organizations, and town departments in all matters pertaining to disability. Equal access and participation includes physical access and as well delivery of services in alternate formats, for instance, for those with hearing and sight impairments. As an example, we want to be truly accessible with this show to all of our viewers. To this end, we are making this program closed captioned for those who are deaf and hard of hearing. And now I'd like to introduce you to our first ever guest, Brooke Green. Good morning, Dr. D. Good morning, Brooke. Brooke is a veteran, so that's the first thing I want to do is thank her for her service. Uh, Brooke is also a, she's one of Wilmington's finest. She is a lieutenant on the Wilmington Fire Department. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. And yourself? Good. So, Brooke, how long have you been on the commission? So, I'm going into my second year on the commission, um, and I perform some of the duties as a communications and um, website uh, officer for the commission right now. Okay, which we really need help with. Well, I'm <laughs> <on>. <laughs> and and what inspired you to want to be on the commission? Actually, it was kind of um, an intersection of my job from the fire department and uh, a, a program that you had put on a couple years back where you had a group come in and um, provide resources for people with disabilities in regards to emergency, emergency and uh, emergency preparedness and disaster preparedness. And I went to that because I'd seen it through the fire department and then I, then I realized that there was a commission on disabilities and I thought this is something that I would like to get involved with um, because of my job but also because of my son. Okay, and we are so blessed to have you with us. <laughs> So Brooke is also a parent of a child with a disability, Bruce. That's correct. So how old is Bruce? Bruce is 14, um, a very typical 14-year-old boy, um, and he was born uh, profoundly deaf. Okay. What do you see as Bruce's strengths? Bruce is uh, quite resilient. Um, you know, he... Uh, being born deaf, uh, we, we were able to get him cochlear implants very early in his life and never really recognized um, that he had any differences, limitations. Um, so, you know, he bounces back, he's resilient, and he just keeps on keeping on like a normal 14-year-old boy now. What are some of his favorite activities? He is hockey obsessed, which is great, and uh, lacrosse. Um, he, with, especially with the hockey, we found a great resource in the Stan Makita Hockey School for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, um, which is held in Chicago every year, um, and specifically for hockey players to... So can you, can you tell us how, what's the difference between that hockey league and, say, the hockey league here in Wilmington? Sure. Which, and he plays for both, 
but there are there are tips and tricks that they've taught him at the Stan Makita School uh, on how to um, you know, use uh, the boards, say, uh, the see reflections in the boards. Maybe I shouldn't be telling all the tricks now. <laughs> um, but he, he uses the, you know, seeing the reflection in the boards if he can't hear a player coming up behind him. Um, but it also gives him that sense of community that he doesn't have a lot of access to out here. Um, and it, and it's, it's kind of wrapped up in his favorite thing is you know, being hockey. Um, so it's not, um, it's not taking him out of his element. It's just adding his other identities. What was it like for him when he first went to that camp and discovered other hearing impaired children playing hockey? It was it was pretty it was pretty interesting as a parent to see um, that he was able to slip right into the group. And you know, kids are a lot more understanding, accepting in general. Um, and they they accepted him right into the group, and he was like, "Oh, there's there's other people, there's other hockey players that have, you know." And it's interesting to see them. They talk. How do you how do you keep your hearing aids stead, steady under your helmet? And they they share those those tricks things with each other. We, yeah, things that other people wouldn't think of. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So that's great. So um, so what is it like? having a child with a hearing impairment in mainstream school in Wilmington? It's, um, it's an adventure. It, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the Wilmington School District is a very good school district and, you know, thankful for that. Um, but you never realize how many, uh, not, not necessarily fights, but the things, the resources you might need until you have to, have to ask for them or fight for them. Or, um, so he, he is in mainstream, um, he is on a 504 plan, so he gets uh, an interpreter because he also does, uh, keeps up with sign language, uh, to be able to um, share in the, in the deaf community as well, and, but also into the mainstream community. Um, the special education department has been helpful to us, um, but also the parents, the parents that you meet, who have gone before, who have had um, had to fight for services, uh, has been very helpful. So, um, so what's it like now with COVID nineteen? Um, how has school <laughs> been set up for him starting this month? Uh, it's a, it's it's difficult for everyone, um, but those of us, you know, parents with uh, children who have additional needs or additional services. We're kind of, um, you know, we're, we're just kind of sitting in the back saying, okay, you know, I see what you're doing for the main, the big group. Right. Now, what are we gonna do for our children? Um, you know, I just how am I gonna get his interpreter involved uh, when they're doing their online schools? Because uh, a, a right. large portion of school will be online this year. Um, the other problem that we have is, you know, when if he does go to school in the hybrid system, uh, masks, seeing people's uh, mouths and facial expressions are huge for people with uh, hearing disabilities. For communication. For communication, and and you don't realize even as a as a hearing person how much you r rely on seeing someone's face and seeing someone's lips until you can't. Right. So. Um, right. It kind of gives you that that empathy for, ah, oh, I didn't realize, you know, you know, I, you know, sit there and think my 14 year old's just not paying attention to me, and it's just an added layer of difficulty for him now. So have they been able to do any practice sessions or anything with him? No, <laughs> no, it's 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 been a tough go for everyone. I think this uh, this year is going to be a uh, how do they call it in sports a rebuilding year, right? Yes. You know, we'll put it that way. Um, but we'll make it work. Yeah. We, you know, we always do. So. Yeah. So how else has disability affected um, you and your family? Um, you know, it, it gives us an appreciation, I think, for uh, the things that we have and the things that we don't. Um, you know, and, and I hate to say about myself that I didn't realize um, some of the difficulties faced by uh, people with disabilities, you know, as, as a, 
um, a person you know out there in the world, I say you know before having Bruce, you know oh yeah there's 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 ramps there's closed captioning on the TVs um, there's there's laws in place to help uh, the disabled community, and you don't realize it until you need it, and say ah yeah those laws are there those 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 resources are there, but there's so much more. Um, and it really has opened our eyes yes, to yeah. the needs of a broader community. Right, so there's been the Americans with Disabilities Act that has been in effect for 30 years now. Right. And it's amazing how far we still need to go to make it fully accessible for people. Exactly. And like you, before I had my car accident, I didn't realize the world had been totally inaccessible to people with disabilities. I became disabled before the um, ADA law. Uh, so I, that um, spurred me to become a civil rights advocate um, for people with disabilities. Because until it affects you, it's difficult to realize just how much is needed. Exactly. So. So are there any other challenges that you see affecting people with disabilities that we need to work on in the commission? I, within the commission, I, excuse me, um, within the commission, I'd like to, um, I'd like to start hearing a little bit more from the community uh, about what, what they've found as needs and resources that they'd like to see. Um, and like I said, you know, working on trying to get the website um, a little bit more between accessible and um, having links, resources, information on there. Uh, but I can't, uh, I can't even imagine all the needs that might be out there. So as a commission, you know, having this is great. So thank you, Dr. D, for putting this together because to get the word out there, well, what do, what do people need? What do people, other people see? Other people who have the disabilities and are saying, these are things that we, we would like to see. Well, tell us and we can try and help you find resources and put it out there. And something that you may have found can help someone else who may be newly disabled. Exactly. Um, so sharing those experiences um, with, with people who are, don't even realize that, um, that there's issues to contend with still 30 years, 40 years later. Um, I actually had met someone last night and uh, said, uh, you know, just chatting, and she had said her husband was uh, newly disabled or recently within the last year. And I said, oh, you know, while I'm doing the show on the, with the uh, Commission on Disabilities, and she says, I've lived in Wilmington all my life. I didn't know there was a commission for wow. people with disabilities. Wow. So just, you know, trying to get the word out there and, yeah. um, you know, provide resources and say, hey, where, you know, what would you like to see? Yeah. And maybe we can help with that. So I've been with the commission for over 30 years, and in the beginning, um, we started, um, my children were in school and I couldn't access their classrooms, and so we started with schools and um, talking with the town about making it accessible for people with disabilities, whether it's the child in school or the parent who wants to visit the child's classroom. And Wilmington was um, phenomenal. They were just so open. This is before the, uh, the law. There were some laws. There's a 504 law, architectural access laws. But Wilmington was so open to, okay, so what can we do to help? What needs to be done? How can we try to fit this in the budget? Mm -hmm. And so I started working with them way back then. So the commission was very active for the first like 15 years or so. Um, and we went through all the town departments and, and the schools and all the programs and services to make sure that they were accessible um, to all people with disabilities. But like you're pointing out, there's so much more that needs to be done. I hope we can all work together and uh, get it out there for everybody, so. Very good, very good. Okay, so, well, thank you, Brooke, very much for being our guest and being our very first guest. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Dr. D. <laughs> and now um, I would like to leave you with an inspirational, notable quotable. Today's quote is from Helen Keller. Although the world is full of suffering, it is full also of the overcoming of it. 
So I'd like to thank you for watching our show and remind you if you are a person with a disability or know a person with an interesting job, ho hobby, or talent, we'd love to hear from you and have you as our guest. Um, also, uh, if you have any disability issues that you would like to know more about, please email us at accessabilities2020 at gmail.com. And if you have any comments you'd like to make on the show, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, thank you very much. Stay positive, and we'll see you next time.